Okay, so today we're going to look at hypothesis testing for proportions, and it should be a pretty easy lesson for you guys. Uh, we're going to learn both methods, the traditional method and the p-value method for proportions, but you guys have already learned both those methods in the previous sections, um, and they're really similar, so uh, this should be a nice quick one for you. So you know the five steps for the traditional method. The only thing that's gonna change when you're dealing with proportions is step three. So when you compute the test value, it's gonna be a different formula. So your Z value is found by doing P hat minus P all over the square root of P times Q divided by N. And we already know what all that stuff stands for. It's the same stuff that it was back when we learned about uh, confidence intervals for proportions. So P hat is your sample proportion. That's the X over N, where X is the number of people who have the characteristic that you're talking about. Your population proportion is the lowercase p, and then N is your sample size. Now, as far as rounding, the one thing you have to really watch out for in this section uh, is your P hat. So in Connect Math, if when you're doing this part, you have to round your decimal place uh, to or you have to round your value to three decimal places. If you round to two, if you round to four, and then you continue on in the problem, it's gonna throw your final answer off and you're gonna be really frustrated. So just keep that in mind when you go do stuff on Connect. Okay, so example one says, a researcher claims that based on the information obtained from the CDC, 17% of young people ages two to 19 are obese. Uh, to test this claim, she randomly selects 200 people and found that 42 were obese. Alpha is 0.05. Is there enough evidence to reject the claim? We use the traditional method. Okay, so step one is to state our hypotheses. So the claim is that 17% of young people are obese. So we'll say that P is equal to 0.17. So a couple things here. Make sure you're not using mu anymore. That's only when you're doing hypothesis tests for averages. If you're doing it about proportions, obviously you should use a P. And then make sure you turn any percents into decimals. So don't ever write 17%, use your 0.17. And make sure you label the claim. That is not optional. I've noticed a lot of people leaving that off when they're doing their notes. Um, so make sure you put that. And then for H1, since the claim is that it's equal to 0.17, you're gonna do not equal to 0.17 for the alternative. Okay, step two, uh, we're gonna get our critical values. So alpha is 0.05. This is a two-tailed test. So from that list I gave you, your critical values are gonna be plus or minus 1.96. And then step three is where we're gonna use that formula to get our Z value. So before we do that, I'm gonna uh, figure out what everything is. So P hat is gonna be uh, X over N. So it's the number of people from your sample who were obese. So that's 42 out of the total number of people in the sample, which is 200. So this is the place where you have to watch out for that rounding. Now, 42 divided by 200 is exactly 0.21. So I'm only gonna use two decimal places. On a lot of the problems though, you're gonna get a number that fills your entire calculator. Make sure you round it to three decimal places. Okay. Um, let's see, the population proportion up in step one, we said that was equal to 0.17. And then Q, you guys know how to find that by now. Q is always one minus P. So one minus 0.17 is 0.83. All right, so now we'll plug into the Z formula for proportions. So it's gonna be 0.21 minus 0.17 all over the square root of 0.17 times 0.83 divided by 200. So if you have your graphing calculator, I would grab that out. Make sure that you can type this in correctly. This is a really hard thing for students to get right in their calculator. So I'm gonna show you uh, for the 83s what it should look like. So make sure you put parentheses around the entire numerator. And then I would just copy how I did it for the denominator. There's more than one way to do it. You can introduce more parentheses if you want, but students usually screw that up. So I would try to keep it simple and just type it how I have it there. So try that out, pause this if you need to. I'm gonna keep going though. 
So when you round your z value to two decimal places, like we always do, you're going to get 1.51. All right, then step four, you want to go ahead, draw your bell curve. So I am most likely writing my own test for you guys to take in Canvas, and it will most likely be short answer. I'm going to ask that you show your work. So you're going to need to do stuff like actually draw the bell curve. So a lot of people are just skipping stuff when they're writing the notes. So make sure you're actually like drawing your curve and whatnot. That's part of showing your work. Okay, so on our curve, we're going to put our critical points. So they were uh, plus or minus 1.96, and it's a two-tailed test. So I will show the shading in both tails. Those are my rejection regions. And then you just observe where your test value is. So test value is 1.51. So 1.51 clearly falls in between there. So that's the non-rejection region. So our decision is that we do not reject the null hypothesis. And then step five, we're going to make our conclusion statement. So the claim was in the null hypothesis, and we said we do not reject the null. So therefore, we say that there is not enough evidence to reject the claim. And please make sure you're writing that full sentence out. If you just say there's not enough evidence or there's not enough evidence to reject, Neither one of those things is a full sentence, and it doesn't really mean anything if it's not a full sentence. So you got to write the whole thing out. It's nine words. I'm confident you can do that. Okay, example two says the Gallup crime survey stated that 23% of gun owners are women. A researcher believes that in the area where he lives, the percentage is less than 23%. So he randomly selects 100 gun owners and finds that 11% of the gun owners are women. Alpha's 0.01 is the percentage of female gun owners in his area, less than 23%, use the traditional method. Okay, so same steps that we just did. So step one, we'll state our hypotheses. So our null hypothesis, let's see, the claim is gonna be that um, the researcher believes the percentage is less than 23%. So for the null, I'm going to use the equal to sign and put equals 0.23. And then the alternative, I'll actually write the claim. So I'll say that P is less than 0.23, and I'll label that as the claim. Step two, we'll get our critical value. So alpha is 0.01. This is a left-tailed test because I'm looking at the sign in the alternative, which is a less than sign. So my critical value is negative 2.33. Okay, step three. So P hat is your sample proportion. So it says that in that sample, he found that 11% were gun owners. So P hat is gonna be 0.11. And then for P, um, well, that's what we wrote up in step one. So P is 0.23. And then Q is 1 minus 0.23, so you get 0.77. And then we'll plug everything into that Z test value formula. So we'll do 0.11 minus 0.23 all over the square root of 0.23 times 0.77 divided by 100. Again, type that in carefully and you should get a Z value of negative 2.85. Okay, step four, I'm gonna draw my bell curve. I'll put my critical value on there, which is negative 2.33. It's a left-tailed test, so I'm gonna shade to the left and show that's my rejection region. And then I'll look at where the test value falls. So negative 2.85 is on the left of negative 2.33. So since it falls in that rejection region, I'm going to reject the null. And then step five. So I'm rejecting the null, which means I'm going to support the alternative. And since that's the claim, I'll say that there is enough evidence to support the claim. 